Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, good evening. welcome, welcome. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, for being our Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our master. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our creator. There is no other God but you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you and we appreciate you. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for being our Lord. We thank you, Father God, for sending Jesus for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being obedient to the Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for paying the price, wiping away the sin debt that we don't have to pay it. We love you and we appreciate you. There is no other God but you. You said in your word that there is no other Savior but you. And we cling and we hold on to that. Because you said it. You are not a man that you should lie. And you will not turn your back on your covenant. And you will fulfill what you said you would. We thank you. We appreciate you. Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place today. We thank you and believe that you are opening up our understanding so that we can grasp hold to your word. So that we can consistently obey and do what the Father requires. And so that our hearts can be joyous in doing it. Because you said in your word, Father God, that your word is not burdensome. It is not vain and not pointless and not useless to serve you. For it is of a great advantageous for us to obey you. We thank you for giving us that great and mighty standard to live by. And as we go before your people today, Father God, we believe that they'll grab hold to it so that they can apply it to their everyday life. Use my heart, use my mind, use my mouthpiece, Father God, to minister your word to your people this day. And we covenant with you right now to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of tonight's session. We know that there's neither time, nor place, nor distance in the spirit realm. The same anointing that is on your word going forth live will be the same anointing if people will hear it from years and years and years to come. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. And all who agree with that prayer say amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise, God. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Glory to the Father for being our dad. You know, I, I've been having I've been having more and more people mention to me that when I teach, sometimes it's kind of hard for them to grab hold to it. And you know, I'm I'm kind of like explaining it, explaining. It. I'm not gonna. I'm 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 only ch I'm only gonna change the way I teach when the Holy Spirit unctions me to. You know, like when I first came back. I'm kind of like give you my testimony first. When I first decided to go back to church quite a few years ago now the word of the word of faith which we preach, the word of God some people find it very boring reason being because they've been in the world so long and they were so used to it. When they did go to church in times past, the preacher, I don't know what a lot of preachers was doing. I, you know, coming from the African-American community, a lot of them just made a bunch of noise. You know, hooping and hollering, jumping up and down, uh, doing everything that they can to grab the attention of people. Now, I'm all for hooping and hollering. You know, but at the same time, I'm only going to hoop and holler when the word has excited me. I'm not going to hoop and holler just to have 
as what I call an emotional fit just to uh, try to grab you. I'm not finna hoop. I'm not finna him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't finna do all that. And some other people, when you go, when they've gone to other churches, they've gone a lot of churches where they constantly ringing bells. I don't know if they're ringing a bell to keep people awake or if they're ringing a bell. You know, my, my, my church, the church I came from, it was called um, um, Breath of Life Christian Center. And the, it said, we, they had bells too, bells of holiness. Every time you hear the bells, it, it, it reminds you to live holy. Ding, 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 ding. Welcome to the high. You know, I, I, I remember that. And, and because, but that scripture, it wasn't to keep people awake. If somebody falls asleep in our church, <laughs> the pastor or whoever, they'd be like, hey, wake up. You didn't come here and get all dressed up to come to church and go to sleep. You know, you, you ain't do all that. You came here to hear words. And I did a, t I did a topic some time ago, some time ago, a teacher some time ago, a couple years ago now. And it was about teaching and preaching. And a lot of us, because we don't know, you, if you don't, if you go into God's word, just go get any concordance, any concordance, Bible concordance. If you look up the word teach, and you look up the word preach, you'll see that the word teach is mentioned three, maybe even four times more than the word preach. So, that says a clear message to me. That God wants his people taught. It even says over there in the book of Hosea. That my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. When you go to read in the book of Proverbs. And uh, King David was talking to his children. I personally, think, I personally believe that he was talking to King Solomon. And he said listen. Oh, children of the, oh, listen to a father. I believe that was the Spirit of God talking through David to the people. Okay, so y'all, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Go over that book of Proverbs. <laughs> y'all looking at me like I ain't never read that, you know. You know, and I'm not finna try to, I'm not finna try to bring you into kind of any kind of condemnation. But here's a key word here that. We need to eradicate out of the body of Christ. We really need to kick it out. We really need to kick it out. And this is not why my intention was going down. Um, just like there's a, somebody, all, all the people have been coming to me and they've been saying, but you, it just seemed like it's boring. I fall asleep. When you come into a, a teaching type setting, I'm telling you, be, if you hadn't retrained your mind, it's going to be kind of boring. But it's up to you. And the Spirit of God will grab you if you if you get focused. Think about all of the people who go to school now. And we ain't talking about college dropouts yet. We ain't talking about college dropouts. And when you're trying to go for a master's degree and you decide to drop out of school. Or if you're trying to go for a, a, doctorate, a doctorate or some kind of uh, bachelor's degree. We talking about elementary school children now. Parents are letting elementary school they, they children drop out because they children are saying it's boring. I actually heard some students tell me once before that what the teachers were teaching them they already knew, so that they just they decided not to go anymore. And I said. But that teacher already got their college degree. You ain't even got a high school diploma. <laughs> you need to be trying to get what's in the, maybe what the teacher is teaching, you do already know. It, it just goes to show me that you have no discipline to sit there and get your education. Because you would rather be out playing football, basketball, and those things are great. Those things are great. I promise you. People have gone on to have successful careers in the NBA, in the, in the NFL, or or they've gone to become coaches or whatever. But those jobs or those careers, they don't open up every day. 
They don't open up every day. I like that one commercial that the NCAA always puts out, and they, they do it every year, right around graduation time. And they say, and they talk about, they show the different guys and uh, girls that have gone and have had a good, successful collegiate careers as far as basketball, football, volleyball, baseball. And they said, 80% of us go on to other fields. We don't go off into the NBA. We don't go off into Major League Baseball. You need your education. What's this got to do with what you were just going to talk about? You need your spiritual education. You need your spiritual education. And the only way you're going to get that is through the Word of God. Look what it says here, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 4, I mean. Look what it says. I believe this is King David speaking to his children by the Spirit of God. Remember, up under the Old Covenant, a lot of people don't even know this. The Spirit of God, he came on under, when, when the Spirit of God, when he was needed, he was needed all the time. But he only, because of the dispensation of the covenant that they were up under, he is available to come up on everyone now, all those who will for him to come up on them. Like me, I'm baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit right now. I, 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 I know I am. Bible tells me when a man gets baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, he is able to speak in another tongue. I can speak in another tongue. I speak in tongues every day. But up under the old covenant, he only came on kings, priests, and prophets. Kings, priests, and prophets. And here King David is. I believe he is speaking via the Holy Spirit. To his children. And just look what it says. Hear ye children. Oh Lord. Hear ye children. The instruction of a father. And attend to no understanding. Wow. Look what he says. Hear ye children. The what? The instruction. Of a father. I believe this is. The, this is father God. Talking to, talking through King David, not just to the people under the old covenant, but also up under the new covenant, you need to get your education when it comes to the word of God. You need it, man. And, and, and you, you, Lord Jesus, I can't even tell you countless times that because I knew the word of God, it kept me from hurt and harm. Because I knew the word of God. It kept me on a path of righteousness. Oh Lord Jesus. I see. I'm going to go preach to myself over here. Because I knew the word of God. I was able to stay sane. Because there are, there are demonic spirits out there. Constantly bombarding people's minds and some of us don't even know it and I and I've said it here in this church people don't know it but when Satan is attacking your mindset he sounds just like you he's a vocalist and he'll make you think that the thought that you thinking belong to you because it's your voice and if you don't know the word of God ask yourself this question when you first wake up in the morning time, or at night, waking up from a nap, most people have 9,002 different things running across their brain. When they first wake up, they hear that alarm beeping, beep, 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 and they reach over, they finally cut it off, pay the bill, go to work, take a shower, brush your teeth, blah, 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 my, and I'm telling you, man, if you don't, if you don't know, he's like, well, what's that got to do with the word of God? Think about it. The first thing people run, some people run across their brain. Oh, Lord, another day. <laughs> what, what, kind of, what kind of thought is that? A negative thought. Depression. <sighs> I got to give myself up for another day. This, you got to say, this is the day. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. If you don't.
off. If you don't know the word, I'm telling you, Satan will capture your thinking as soon as you wake up out the bed. And he'll grab you for the rest of the day. All because you thought it was too boring. It, it, it's slow. I'm finna go to sleep. But I sit there. I get sleepy. Do, 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 do. Who you think rocking you to sleep, people? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, mean I, I want you. I'm, I'm trying to just trying to get you to use some common sense here. So people have been telling me that maybe I need to change. Or I said, if I change, if I change, I, and to obey you, I'm going. Now I'm gonna find ways to try to keep your attention. I'm gonna find a way to keep your attention. It, it may be in a uh, comical statement. It, it may be in a woohoo, yes. It may be something of that nature, because I, the only way that's gonna happen is because maybe I may be when I'm ministering to you all, or anybody out there, and the Spirit of God reveals something to me, and I get excited. I hope that you pick up on it too, so you get excited too. You know, praise be to God, because guess what? When the Word of God is going forth, if you really, really hear, you be like, man, that's exactly what I've been needing. Praise God. I've been needing that. And you know, a lot of us, we, we, we need it. We, 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 need, we need God's education. Because think about it. Here we are. We say we believe in God. Well, what, what does it say in the book of Acts? It says, it is appointed for a man once to die, then the judgment. Most people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. They're going to die. We're going to die. You're going to die. But I don't want to talk about it. I know I'm going to die. Why are you talking about that for? Now you're going to bring me, make me sad. Why? Bible say, if you die in the Lord, you're going to go be with them. So why why would you be sad? Because I'm going to miss my friends and my mamas and my daddy. How are you going to miss them? they going to miss you. But I guarantee you, if you die in the Lord and you go going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, you ain't going to think about us. See, and say a lot of people ain't that. I ain't never heard nothing like that. Well, guess what? You need to open your Bible up because the Bible teaches on it. The Bible teaches on it. Uh, what was it? It was, uh, what was it? 20 years ago? Oh, Lord Jesus, it's been 20 years. It shows. 19. Yeah, it'll be 20 years this coming up September. It'll be 20 years this coming up September when my father passed away. And I'm going to be honest with you. The stuff I'm teaching you now, I didn't know then. I didn't know then. And my father, he he had opportunity after opportunity in early in his years to be able to preserve his life longer. But you know, through because of ignorance, we need to eradicate that that word. I've already said it. We need to eradicate the word ignorance. Gone. It need to be gone out of the body of Christ. Because of ignorance and and because of uh, pride and other thing, other principles that came about. You know, my father passed away at 57 years old. Beloved of my mother and, and you know, four, three, he had four beautiful children. And you know, he had a buku of people. I so said it. Buku. He had a buku of people <laughs> who loved him. But you know, my father, he, he, he went on to be with the Lord. He went on to be with the Lord. What's that going to do with me? I was sad. Hurt. Because on a, for a while, me and my dad had a rocky relationship. We had a really, really rocky relationship. But it was one promise that I remember making to my father that I was going to take care of my mama. And my mama pretty much, except you know, for the section of a few years here and now, she's pretty much been with me since day one. And I've been doing everything I can to help take care of her and financially, physically, emotionally. And now I'm her pastor. Praise be to God. <laughs> My, I, my mother's pastor, and she. I, I remember the days when she was pastoring over me. Like Lord God was telling my mama, that boy ain't gonna do some great things for me. Not that boy. You know what that boy was doing? <laughs> like Jesus, like yeah, Pam. I know what he was doing. I, I mean, I, but he's. I still anointed him. Now here it is, years later. I was mad when my father passed away. I was mad and hurt, but I did not understand. That he went to go be with the Lord Jesus. So I was hurt. 
and mad and angry and be honest with you, just flat foot bitter because the relationship was rocky. It wasn't until up about, was it, but I would say about 12, 13 years ago. So he had been gone good eight, nine years already, 12, 13, something like that. 12 years ago, 12 years ago. When I, when I made a decision, I heard a man of God ministering on forgiveness. And he and I was like, and he and, I, and he said, it's connected to the education. I'm giving my own testimony here. When I heard a man of God ministering on forgiveness, and he said, just because the person is gone, you still, as an act of your faith, can forgive them. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I forgive every senior for all the wrong that he did toward me. And Father God, I know he's there with you. Tell him I'm sorry for all the things that I disobeyed him in. Set me, I mean, made me free. Made me free. And I, and it's like, He's there. I'm here. I look forward to seeing the brother again. I'm going to see him. I'm going, he's with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm believing to go be too. But if you don't hear these kind of testimonies, or if you don't hear and consistently hear the word of God, you'll never hear. You'll never get educated in that area. Thus, therefore, your mind gets turned over to Lucifer. And all of his demonic friends, who all of them going to end up in the lake of fire. See, I'm, try I'm trying to help you, brother, sister. Uh, I love you. You know, Jesus said it. What did he say? What did he say over there uh, in the book of uh, John? Go there. Go to the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Watch this. Verse, John chapter 13. I'll put the thing down. Watch this. Verse 34 and 35. Watch this. He says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, are y'all there? I'm sorry, it's kind of like jumped on it. Y'all get there yet? Come on, catch up with me. Catch up with me. My time almost up. <laughs> it's a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. What's this got to do with education? Think about it. A whole lot. Whole lot, whole lot. I just said I love you and I, and I care about you. Some people may say you supposed to love them with the love of the Lord. Okay, people, don't get so spiritually spooky on me. Don't do it. Come on, watch it. Watch, watch what he says. Jesus says, "A new commandment, oh Lord, I give unto you that ye love one another." I do love people. See, right now. Disconnect. I'm going to say something to you all. With this word love, disconnect emotions. Go look it up. If you look it up, these scriptures, this word love, in the, in the Greek, in the, in, the, in the Greek, Hebrew, in the Greek is agape, which means the God kind of love. Unconditional. It means God loves you in spite of you. No matter how bad you act, God loves you. He loves you. Notice, he says that ye love one another. How do I know this is agape love? As I have loved you. That's how I know it's agape love. He wants us to love people the way he loves people. 
unconditionally. Do not put any kind of boundaries on it. Only The only one boundary that you are supposed to put up is when people asking you to commit sin. They ask you to disobey God. Book of 1 Thessalonians says that we are called to peace and holiness for without which no man shall see God. Called to peace and holiness. So if I'm going to try to give me an example about the peace. If this girl come up to me trying to have sex with me and I'm not married to her and she say if you love me you will do it. I love you but now I'm breaking holiness because now i got to commit adultery against my wife, dishonor God and dishonor my wife, get in trouble with my mama, <laughs> as well as dishonor my children just to prove to you that I, I got, I'm, no, I'm breaking this peace with you. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to love you from a distance. I'm not going to go into that. So I want to God love you the same way Jesus, Jesus gave his life for the people, I'm going to do everything I can to help you keep your relationship with your family, with your friends, with, with, with the Lord Jesus Christ first and foremost of all. Uh, our church is even reaching out to different people through certain dating sites. And, you know, it's me and my wife on the doggone dating site. And people be saying, well, why are you a pastor? Why are you? They be eating, sending me a message. Why are you on him? You know, all people come on this side of people who are looking for a date. And you're right, I am looking for a date. I'm trying to hook you up with the ultimate date. I'm trying to make a love connection to Jesus Christ. It's me and my wife. The profile picture is to come on, join the church. Come to church. I'm looking for you talking to men and women. I don't care. I'm trying to hook you up with Jesus. Agape love you. But I said, I care. I do agape love you. Look what it says. That he also love one another. When I looked up that second word love, if you look it up, it's connected right back to what the Bible calls uh, phileo love. Or uh, the phileo love is um, it's erotic love, phileo love, and agape love. It's the love that was based on the old covenant. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Which means I need to show people that I care. Not just some robot going around telling people, telling, you know, I love you, and then with the love of the Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you. Like, you just sound so fake. People need to genuinely know that you care. But if you don't get educated on a consistent basis, you won't know this. You, you won't know it. It's like, you, you'll go without it, and all because you think it's boring. And it's not boring. It's God. What, look what Jesus says. By this, if you do these two things, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have love one to another. All through educating. People will genuinely, they'll see you, they'll hear you, and they'll like, yeah, he really, really follows God. And it's not to say that you won't make mistakes, because you will. But then you'll own up to him. You say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, boss. I'm, I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry, wife. I'm sorry, friend. I'm sorry, sister. I'm sorry, brother. You know, I made a mistake. And even if you didn't make the mistake, you'll say, I'm sorry, even though it ain't your fault. Why? Because people are like, hold on, he a real believer. He's a, he, she's a real believer in Jesus Christ. That, 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 that draws them in. And now you can give them, say, man, what you... Well, you tell me. I, people come up and ask me all the time. I Harvey, mean, what is it? What is it? The really how, how did you do this? No, I obey God. Somebody asked me this the other day. They were like, you tell me what, what do I need to do to uh, be able to uh, get, a, uh, get a second income? I'm like, trust God. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I, can I trust God too. <laughs> every day. For every day. Every day. I trust God. God, by this, all through education, sitting down, getting educated by the word. So, 
Uh, if you if you choose to not want to sit up under ministries like this, you're gonna miss out because you're gonna always end up at a church where they're gonna hoop, holler, ring bells, whatever they do to try to try to keep your attention, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go there and you may get an emotional high, and you're gonna go. Satan would love to beat up on them kind of people. He say, go to church. Go to church. You're going to go feel better. You're going to feel better. And then you go to church. And you're going to be like, yay! Praise God! Hey! You know when to shout. You know when to hallelujah at the right time. You know when the church, you know when the pastor, he's going to see, he's going to stand up. He might call him an altar call. You, you know everything. And you're going to leave church. And all of a sudden, woe is me. I don't know what to do. I have no strength. Lord, help me. You said you always be there. Why? You the one when I went, went without the education, going to, and I don't know, I don't know, there's a whole lot of churches out there that are just not teaching stuff. They're not teaching anything. They're preaching on topics. They're topical teachers. And they're teaching, they, 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 they preaching on topics, but then you walk out to church and you have still no education about what you need to do. You, you, you just you just walk away from it, and, and and it baffles my mind when some people and I ain't gonna spend too much time around on this one. It baffles my mind when I see people who do go. I hear people in my audience right now talking. People in my art, people in my church who do go to church at a church that's teaching, and they still go home and don't even apply what they just got taught. They go right home and then don't apply. They be like, I don't get it. What you doing? What are you doing? I mean, I, I've been out that hour too. And I'm, I'm going to close up here. I remember the first time I started learning how to, I had started how to live by faith. And I was believing God for some different things. And I was trusting God. And I was talking to God. I was talking to God. And I was talking to God. I was praising and worshiping God. And all of a sudden, uh, I got before my pastor. And I was asking him different questions. And he was like, he said, okay, what else are you doing? And I said, well, that's all I'm doing. He said, why are you still talking to God? Haven't you already talked to God? Yeah, he said, speak to your mountain. Ding, 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 ding. The bell went off. Yeah, you're right. Speak to my mountain. That's right. And guess what I did? Walk right about it, speak to my mountain, and went right to the house. God, 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 please, Jesus. And I, for two more years, all I did was talk to God. I didn't speak to my mountain. I didn't do it. And it was like things didn't happen because I kept talking to God. And it was like, I was like, Lord Jesus, I am so sorry. I just, I, I missed it. Education, though, people. I love you with the love of the Lord, but I'm going to always, always plead. Paul said it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I'm going to plead with you. Get into a Bible-based teaching church. Look at the pastor. See if he's teaching it. See if he's living it. You'll know when a person is anointed. You'll know it. Yeah, you'll know it. They may not have the biggest car on the block. They may not have the biggest this on the block. They may not have the biggest that. They may not have the most money. But you'll see God working through them. And you get with that church and you learn. And you learn. You submit yourself to the teachings of that pastor. And the moment the pastor and the, and and his uh his his staff, whoever he has on his staff, the moment you see them not chasing after God, putting God first, get out the church. Don't be afraid because your uncle and your mama went to that church. Leave that church. Say no, I got to go. You are not following God. Not saying that they're not gonna make mistakes because you have to be very cautious with that. Get into a Bible-based teaching church that's going to teach you God's Word so that you can grow. So that you can grow. I love you. 
Come on, head to New Life Christian Center so we can show you and teach you how to follow Jesus Christ. Because when a new king, when Jesus comes to get us up out of here, he already wants people prepared to go into the new kingdom. He's going to have a whole lot on his hands when we get there for people who never got trained. Make it that much more easier for your transition because he's already prepared. Glory! Glory! God was spoken by the Spirit of God. Jesus is already prepared. You make your transition easier because you're born again. Some of y'all, some of y'all who ain't born again, you just set yourself up for eternal damnation. But the rest of us make our transition that much easier. So that when we transition over into the new kingdom, a way of doing things, because it's going to be done. Jesus is going to be the high priest. He's going to be the ruler and reigner. He's going to be there. And ain't going to be no, let's have a president elect. No, he's going to say, no, this is where it's going to be. You ain't kicking me off the throne. King David says, his throne will be forever. Glory to God. Come on out here, New Life Christian Center, located here at 9825 Lamartine Drive, Port Richie, Florida. Come on out here so that we can show you and teach you how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all next time.